This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. When we deal with the topic of does God heal, we want to be up front. We don't have all the answers. God is bigger than anything we can fully understand. But we do know God is good and he does heal. Matt Rice has been a guest on our show many times, but what you may not know is his wife, Bren, went through a life-threatening illness. Here's that story. It was actually an emergency situation. Um, I had uh, a day where I just got really sick, nauseated, and um, abdomen started swelling, and went to the emergency room. It ended up being a bowel obstruction. It was supposed to be a simple, simple procedure, there were so many things that spiraled out of control from that. Um, blood infections, I got an abdominal infection that, again, pumped my stomach up, you know, um, full of infectious fluid, basically. We had complications with the surgery for the better part of three years. Uh, she was in out of the hospital with uh, different types of medical issues related to that first surgery. Every year that I went, was going through this, I would say I was home maybe a total of a few weeks out of those years. The last visit, when I when they finally sent me up to Cleveland Clinic, I had gotten down to 92 pounds. We uh, took Bryn from hospitals in Columbus uh, to the Cleveland Clinic, out to Cedar sinai in Los Angeles, and we continued to pray, we continued to trust God, and it was a journey for us to get to where uh, that healing began to work in her body. So I got up and I shared with the church, I said, I want you to know I really believe that from this day on, uh, the Lord is working a miracle in my body. And the very next day I had gained one pound and continued to gain from that point until um, in June I had gained 20 pounds. And that was from Easter to June I had gained 20 pounds uh, without the use of any kind of medication or assistance. And so things turned around. We go through the t these tough times so that he can build into us a strength that'll carry us into the next season where you know the scripture says he takes us from glory to glory well i don't know what's on the other side of this but i know it's bigger than what i've been through before i think when you go through a, a struggle like this um, not only does it challenge your faith but it also expands your heart and it expands your heart in the sense that you know what it is to walk through some things with questions uh, before you get to answers and so i trust in that process and uh, knowing he's my healer, but also knowing that, the, that I can trust him in the process of going through that storm. And when you come through such a time as what Bryn has come through, you uh, come through sometimes with more questions, sometimes with more answers. Sure. With me today is, is the husband, Matt Rice. Glad yeah. to have you with us. Uh, when you go through that, you're the pastor. Yeah. And you expect, okay, she's in the hospital, complications, God, you can do this. Yeah. Where does your faith go? I, uh, as far as healing is concerned, I, I had a history of, of seeing God do uh, miraculous you had things. You've seen the miraculous happen. Yeah. You've seen some instantaneous healings. Yeah, I was um, in my own life when I was 16 uh, years old, I was diagnosed with scoliosis. Yeah. Uh, went to the doctor, had trouble breathing. Uh, they took the x rays and, and basically said, you, You've got hope to fix this if you were a brace for a few years. You're back. And, yeah, you know. in between that time, uh, I went to a little Assembly of God church with a big pastor from Oklahoma. He preached and yeah. I did whatever he said. And so uh, at the end of the service, he said, he told me to get up to the front of the church. So, you know, I said, okay. Mm -hmm. I went up. Uh, there wasn't any faith involved, it was pure obedience mm -hmm. uh, to him. And so him and my mom uh, were up there and he prayed. And when he prayed, um, I'll never forget it put his hand on me when he said the name of Jesus. I felt power come out of his hand into my body. I felt my chest expand. I felt the bones begin to move in my back. And um, because I was a teenager, I you know, was a little freaked out by it. I didn't yeah. say anything. I didn't say anything to him. I didn't say anything to anybody. But I went back to my seat and I knew that I had experienced God. We went back to the doctor, he took another x-ray, he said, this is not the same back. And so I never had to wear the brace. So I had seen the power mm -hmm. of God move powerfully. Um, in our ministry, we had seen miracles. We had also seen uh, people who had prayed and didn't receive mm -hmm. immediate miracles. Uh, and so when we came upon uh, this time with Bryn, uh, I, I had a pretty good theology, I think, in place, uh, knowing this, that 
you know, it's, it's our job to believe. Mm -hmm. um, we believe we receive on the basis of God's word, but the manifestation of those healings, Jesus said, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive it and you shall have it. He didn't say how quickly you shall, you shall yeah. have it. He just said you shall have it. it Sometimes this, yeah. there's a lag. Yeah. Did, did this change either one of your, your, your perspectives on, on how you minister or how you worship? I'll tell you what it does. Um, I think anytime you go through something, your heart is expanded for people who suffer and go mm -hmm. through things. And uh, I, you know, not that we weren't compassionate before, mm -hmm. but when you're going through this, it, it really helps you to yeah. feel the pain uh, of others who go through similar things. And even personally, in, inside yourself, I mean, the Word tells us we go, He takes us, he takes us from glory yes. to glory, yeah. and what you're going through isn't, doesn't feel all that glorious. No, it, it doesn't. <laughs> and, and like you said, how, you know, how do you walk through this? I, th I look back and I think one of the things is you don't know how long it's going to last. That's so true. you're kind of walking, you're hopeful yep. at every point, hey, this is one more visit, we'll get done with this surgery, then mm -hmm. we're you know, out of this. So, you know, as it goes along, but I think it's the, it was the grace of God. The toughest thing was my kids, you know. It really wasn't the church, it really wasn't any of those things. It was to see, uh, I had a 12-year-old daughter mm -hmm. uh, when this began, and so much of that time her mom was, um, you know, in the hospital. But uh, we had, you know, God really just um, gave us people uh, that, that were surrounding us and that were with us, and, and uh, she's, you know, they're all strong in faith mm -hmm. today. So it was the grace of God. Was there any specific times in any of those hospitals where you saw the hand of God move? That you think, wow. Yeah, there was. He hasn't forsaken us. Oh. He hasn't forgotten us. So there was one experience. Uh, she went in 2012, and she had surgery, um, basically to for a, a bowel obstruction. Mm -hmm. So they did the surgery on a Thursday. Uh, she wasn't responding well. They did another full abdominal surgery the following Thursday. Uh, then there were complications. They went again, again the following Thursday. So within a oh period of goodness. two weeks, she had th three full abdominal surgeries. While she Horrendous. was recovering, yeah, she, she was recovering and not recovering well. Uh, there was a point I thought we might not, she might not make it. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I went home to be with the kids, went to bed, woke up at midnight, or, I'm sorry, two o'clock in the morning, just wide awake. Her dad has, had come in from Michigan. He was there uh, staying at the hospital. Uh, I saw him the next day and he said, you'll never, I thought we were going to lose her last night. I said, what are you talking about? He said at about two o'clock in the morning, the very moment that mm -hmm. I was awake and I was praying for her. He said, uh, yeah, he said, we'll talk to her later. I'm sure something happened, but the doctors couldn't get her heart under control. Oh, uh, there were nurses running in and then everything just kind of, um, you know, got better. Later, she said, she, she said what happened at that time. She said she felt her spirit, she said she was conscious, and we hear mm -hmm. these stories of yep. people leaving their bodies. She said all of a sudden she was outside of her body, she was looking down, yeah. she could see the nurses, she could see the doctors, and she heard a voice, and it sounded like the voice of her dad. Um, and, and her dad didn't say he spoke this, I think God will use uh, certain things mm -hmm. to get us in the, and maybe he was praying this, I don't know. She heard the voice that said, you can't leave now, uh, you, your kids need you. At that moment, she was back in her body. Her heart settled down. And believe it or not, that was kind of a thing we held on to mm -hmm. uh, that really helped us through this time uh, because it was a, a glimmer of hope in that there was a purpose, was a purpose. for her to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if God would have taken her, uh, we talked about this a little ahead of time, heaven's yeah. certainly not a demotion. Mm -hmm. It's the ultimate healing. Uh, but we, I think, knew at that time there was a reason, there was a purpose for us to stand in faith and fight through this. Yeah, because sometimes that, that wears you down so much yes. that you really can't. Did you, I mean, you, you just mentioned it, but you had to come to a, a point of reconciliation, or just to reconcile with yeah. yourself that what if, what if the Lord does take her to heaven? Yeah. Uh, how did you discuss that between the two of you? I mean, it, you, I, never wanna, you never want to yeah. destroy somebody else's faith, but you say, honey, if you don't make it, you know, what do the kids want for supper? <laughs> well, you got yeah. to reconcile that somehow. How, how did you do yeah, that? Yeah, the concern is with me, it, it would be pizza every, <laughs> yeah. every night. But uh, how, did, how did you discuss that? I don't even that think we without, talked about without it. Without hurting. I, I don't even think we went there. Um, mm -hmm. I think we were, we were so uh, filled with the hope that we're going to fight this yeah. through, we're going to make this through, that we, we never even really went there. Did your fighting it through, yeah. did, did your battle plan change during that time? I mean, you, you, you sit down and say, this is, this is how I'm going to pray, this is what we're going to believe. Did your battle plan change at any point in time during that? I, I, I don't period? think so. I, I think that 
you know, as far as our prayers, um, we stood on the word. You know, mm -hmm. by the stripes of Jesus, she was healed. Whatsoever things, you know, in the Mark eleven twenty four. whatsoever things we desire when we pray, believe we receive them, we shall have them. We stood on that word. Um, we continued to believe God for that healing. I think at the same time, you understand there's practical things that you have to do. Uh, she was uh, in and out of the hospital, I think, four or five times in Columbus, then up to Ohio State University. They couldn't figure it out. Then out to Cedar sinai in California, then up to Cleveland Clinic. Uh, the story was amazing because she got to Cleveland Clinic and they didn't know what to do. They said, we can't do anything. She was at 92 pounds. Uh, they wanted to do another surgery to help her gain weight, but they needed her to gain weight before they mm -hmm. could do the surgery. surgery. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and those are the most brilliant doctors uh, in this field in the world. I think it's the number two mm -hmm. uh, rated in the world. So they didn't know what to do. Bren felt like she couldn't have another surgery. She felt if she did, that that surgery, uh, she wouldn't make it. And so she basically said, I, I want to go home. We took her home at 92 pounds. Um, she got up to church that Sunday and just began to declare the word of God and said, and, and just by inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, she felt in that moment, uh, she said, I'm gonna gain a pound a week. I'm gonna gain a pound a week. And she just kept on, she spoke that. And you know, why it took this long, I don't know. Yeah. I can tell you at that point within, uh, she started gaining a pound a week until she gained 20 pounds and she's never had another one of those surgeries again. She's had other issues she's dealt with. Mm -hmm. uh, she lost two thirds of her intense, intestine. Yeah. So there's a continual sure. battle that we have as far as the things that occur as a result mm -hmm. of that. But as far as that surgery has never been back in and uh, that was in 2015. So she's, uh, it was just a real miracle that occurred. All the way through. Yeah. What about those people that did, didn't get that miracle? And uh, did, would it have changed your ministry had she passed? I, it's hard to say because yeah, you're not you don't there. know until you walk through What do you say it. to that person who's, who has walked through that and yeah. lost a loved one, a, yeah. a mother, father, sister, brother, child, spouse? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that we have to maintain, uh, the scripture says the secret things belong to the Lord our God. Mm -hmm. um, I am a strong, what you would call, word of faith preacher. Sure. I believe that. I also believe we should never, ever beat anybody up with a faith message. Um, it should encourage us. And there have been situations, we talk about the victories, there's been situations I've prayed for things in my life and it didn't happen the mm -hmm. way that I thought it would. I do know this, um, heaven is definitely uh, an ultimate healing. Right. And so if it would have happened that, that Bryn would have went to heaven, it would have, uh, I can't even quantify, um, you know, the effect that would have had on our life sure. and our family. I do know, know there would have been grace, uh, but it still would have been painful. So as a pastor, mm -hmm. um, you walk with people. Sometimes people get the instantaneous healing. Some people like this get the healing that doesn't come immediately, but you'll see the manifestation rather. Mm -hmm. I believe healing is always available. The Word says that. The manifestation of it, um, we don't always understand. Yeah. You know, why does Jesus heal one person, uh, you know, the blind man immediately and then wait three days to for Lazarus, for Lazarus to die, to and then die. for the, yeah, the yeah. extended manifestation. We, we don't know all this. There'll be answers. people who say, well, this, this whole thing about well, heaven's the ultimate goal and it's yeah. the prize, and they say, well, that's yeah. just a cop out because they didn't get healed. Yeah. Do they not really understand what heaven is? Do they not oh, understand I, what the Word of God yeah. is saying? <laughs> what, I think what we'll, awaits yeah. us? I think we'll all have a different perspective uh, when we get to eternity. Mm -hmm. And we get to look back down and say, hey, this, this is not the consolation up here. You know, yeah. This is the real thing. This mm -hmm. is the prize. This is what Paul said the prize, that, that for which I've been apprehended. Right. His purpose on the earth, but even more so than that, this uh, afterlife of um, you know, meeting Jesus face to face, that's really mm -hmm. what we're all headed yeah. for and headed to. As you're mostly on the other side of this, do you look back and say, I'm a, cha I'm a changed man because of this? Oh yeah, and, and I'll share this too. This was interesting, and, and again, I don't want to draw any theological conclusions. People can draw whatever conclusions they want, but uh, the doctor that walked through us, through, through this whole situation with us, did the surgeries, uh, walked uh, through this three year time period. At the end when things started to change, he walked in and closed the door and he started to weep. Oh he goodness. was um, someone at that point, he, he'd fallen into kind of an agnostic mm -hmm. type of a position, brilliant man. And he said, my, my faith is coming back. I said, I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. And he said, Part of it is, he said, what I've watched you walk through and, and looked at Brent, he said, I'd walk in and he said, you're going through this horrendous pain, 
And he said, and you've got your Bible out and you're encouraging me and your faith. And he said, and he's weeping, he said, I want you to know this has changed my life. Wow. I looked at that and, and again, I, I'm not drawing perfect theological yeah. lines here. I'm just saying, this, this is, you know, could it be that sometimes a manifestation could be delayed for someone else's deliverance? Mm -hmm. In other words, that, that many times the healing is there. God's perfect will is healing. Uh, but we never know what God will use everything in our life uh, to gain as much redemptive purpose to reaching people. If, if we put it all on the table, the most important thing here on this earth is souls. And if God can use anything I walk through, the uh, yeah, the faith to, to walk through a fire rather than to extinguish a fire, mm -hmm. if that faith to walk through that fire can capture the heart of someone that doesn't even know God's looking for them, that's worth it yeah. in the end. And I know Bryn and I have talked about that and, and she is a complete piece to know that, hey, if what I went through here touched a soul for eternity, mm -hmm. that's worth it all. Bryn was unable to join us the day we taped Matt's interview. But we want to update you that she's doing well and leading worship and enjoying her brand new grandbaby. Well, Ron Hembry is a pastor, host of a TV show that discusses the Bible, but you may be surprised one of the stumbling blocks he had as a young man was he didn't understand what salvation was. I asked him about that when he joined me recently. I was somebody who knew the best sermons and I knew how to get saved, but I didn't believe it and I was doing interesting things on my other side of my life. You know, I was a young kid and I learned to run with a group of people. We were smashing bus windows and doing different things and getting in trouble and doing things. And I would allow my friends to get in trouble and be over here, you know, and chased by the police several times and all of that. And uh, Dave Yanatone, who was a youth pastor, he said to me, well, you know, Rod, um, I think we're going to know we won't do it. We won't talk to you about it. And I, and I was competitive, so I said, what do you mean you won't talk to me about it? I mean, my dad's your boss. I mean, what? come on. <laughs> I'm a 14-year-old yeah. kid. I'm a little arrogant. But you, yeah. Anyway, so um, he said, no, you couldn't handle it. And, and that really bugged Ooh. me. So I said, I can handle it. What is it? He said, a discipleship class. I said, no problem. Mm. I can do a discipleship yeah, class. So it turns out I that... It was Saturday morning at 7 o'clock. And when you're going yeah, to school, tough. Saturday morning at 7 o'clock, it's not good. But I went. I said, okay, it's only 26, you know, 26 uh, weeks, so I'll do it. The first day we were there, he said, on day one of the month, read Proverbs 1 and Psalms 1. Mm -hmm. Day two, read Proverbs 2 and Psalms 2. Day three, read Proverbs 3 and Psalms 3 and so on. So I got to 21. I got to yep. chapter 21. And I read the first part of Psalms. I have a hole in my soul and I recognized it. I didn't know mm -hmm. God. I really didn't. But that's that chapter. For some reason, on that day, that chapter that light really on and nailed me. And I read, I said, the Lord, the King, finds joy in your strength. How greatly he rejoices in your victory. You have given him his heart's desire. You have not denied the request of his lips. And I remember thinking, my heart's desire, my heart's desire, and I knew that I had a problem, mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to talk to God. So I turned around on the couch, nobody's in the room, it's before school. I said, Lord, I'm a preacher's kid, and I don't even know how to talk to you. Help me. And the Holy Spirit came at that moment and filled my heart. I started bawling like a baby. And I asked Jesus Christ for forgiveness of my sins. I asked Jesus Christ to take my life and make it what he wants it to be. He totally changed me. And I remember being excited. But then as I read on, I remember thinking, well, you know, because I was with a group mm -hmm. you know, that did the bad things. And I remember thinking, you know, that's not good. And I need to talk to my friends about this. I'm carrying my Bible to school now. And I lost 21 Bibles that year because my <laughs> friends tore them up. But anyway, I said, um, I read this. Your hand will capture all your enemies. Your right hand will seize those who hate you. You will make them burn like a fiery furnace. When you appear, the Lord will engulf them in his wrath. Whoa. And I thought, that's a serious verse. Yes. And I looked for my friends and I thought, you know what? God's going to get them. God's going to get them. 
and he never did. Mm -hmm. God never got them. So I thought. They got away with it. They got worse and worse and worse. One friend got away with unbelievable stuff. And that really bothered me. Because I read that. And I we're down here at, at 21 eight, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We're just exactly right. And I said, Lord, come on. Come you, on. <laughs> you got to do this. <laughs> got to do this. Got to do it, you know. And it wasn't until I was uh, 48 that um, I ended up calling one of my friends. And... I was still troubled by this verse, but I just trusted, okay, God will get him sometime. I, I, God will do something, you know, I don't know. But I'm trusting the Lord. And you'd prayed, you'd, you'd prayed this over them. Yeah, I said, Lord, you got to get them. You've got to get, get them. And um, it turns out that God did. God called them. And he called them through me. Mm -hmm. He used me. Because I called my friend. I said, how are you doing? He said, I'm fine. I've got some problems and this and that and the other. He was living in Florida at the time, and the Lord spoke to my heart and said, you need to tell him about who I am and tell him about me. Now, did this guy know that you were a believer? He did, mm -hmm. but he had told me, he's, no I do my truth and he does his truth and away they go, yeah. you know. And I said, you know what, Dave? Jesus Christ died for you. Do you go to church? And do you know what he did? He started crying. I was the one that I had to fulfill that because God had spoken that to me. God will do that if I do my part. Mm -hmm. And that struck me. And I was like, oh man, Lord, I didn't understand. Yeah. It's a matter of understanding your word. I didn't get that till years later. You know, 28 years later, I'm getting it. <laughs> like what happened, Lord, 24 <laughs> years later? And God said to me, spoke to my heart, People don't understand me because they read the Bible and they just like, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you need to meditate. You need to understand what God says because he speaks to Take me. That deep into your heart. So God speaks to you when you read the Bible. Now, there, there's people out there right now that said, well, I've, I've heard about the Bible. I've seen some things. I've read some things. I don't like it. What do you think is the toughest verse for a non-believer to grab a hold of to become a believer? Really? Yeah. These days? Mm-hmm. John, what, what keeps them away? I'll tell you what keeps them away. Uh, because I see it in, in, in today's environment with the political correctness and mm -hmm. all everything going on. Yep. And uh, everything going on related to what God does and what he doesn't do. We actually think that God cares about a lot of things that we do. And uh, we need to understand God cares, but he doesn't consider that, okay? It's not important in his time scale and his, his realm. Of course it's not. <laughs> you know, and, and God, Nicodemus is a guy who's from the mm -hmm. Pharisees. The Pharisees probably came about during the exile. But anyway, the Pharisees were interesting guys. And he comes to Jesus Christ at night. Mm -hmm. And he says to him, I, I got to come to you at night because I don't, you know, I don't know <laughs> yeah. about being, I don't want to share too much space with you in the daytime. He comes to him at night and he says, tell me how do I have eternal life? Because they believed in the resurrection mm -hmm. and the, fair, the Sadducees did not. That's why they were sad, you see. Of course, they were sad. In chapter 3, verse 16, God says, For God so loved the world in this way. He gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish and have eternal life. Now that's good, but a lot of people stop there. Mm -hmm. But keep reading. For God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world, but to save the world mm -hmm. through him. The world is on a downward spiral. Yeah. spiral. It's going down. And they think they can save themselves. They think they can save themselves. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who does not believe is already condemned. Yeah. This is Jesus speaking. Mm -hmm. Because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. And people say, you are too narrow-minded. That's what the Bible says. Yes. And they, I believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. This is the judgment. The light has come into the world and the people love darkness. Mm -hmm. See, read the rest of the verse. Sure. Read the whole thing. Rather than the light because of their deeds, they were evil. For everyone who hates 
or who does evil hates. Okay, so wait a minute. You're talking about hate. We're making laws mm -hmm. about hate. Up in Canada, yeah, we got this law about hate, you know. Yeah. But wait a minute. How do we define our morality? How do we do that? Sure. That's all changed. It's all changed. Mm -hmm. We don't define our morality by the way we think. We define our morality by who we serve. Right. So if we serve Jesus Christ, the supreme God who made the heavens and the earth mm -hmm. and everything in it, that according to the Bible, then we understand. Then we see the kingdom of God. Then we get it. John 3 would be the hardest yeah. chapter for anyone to believe. There's somebody out there right now that's arguing with you about that, saying you are too narrow-minded. There can't be just one way. There can't be just Jesus Christ and that's it. But at the same time, they're feeling like your friend did. They know they're lost. They know it's a downward spiral. They know they have no way out. Would you pray for them right now? They're, they're struggling with I this. would. They're In fact, if it. you're struggling, if you're a person who is struggling with this, understand that I didn't say it. This is the Word of God. This is the Bible. Jesus Christ cares for you. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. loves you. And if you confess your, your heart and realize that you don't have what it takes to overcome, you don't have what it takes to do all the good things you want to do, but if you confess to Jesus that you're a sinner, but He came paid the cost of sin to free you and invite him into your life to be Lord, and I'm going to pray with you right now, invite him into your life to be Lord, then you know what? Your life will change. Pray this prayer and say, Father, in your name I come to you and I believe that Jesus Christ came, died on the cross for the cost of sin, and rose again miraculously. And I believe that he's given me eternal life if I accept him as Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life. I need your help right now. Help me, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask these things. Amen and amen. Amen. And I believe there's, there's people there right now that have just done that. They've struggled with it, they've struggled with it, they've struggled with it, and they think it's a narrow way, but finally they see, I can get through that narrow way. I can come to that narrow way but my life's gonna change, and their life is gonna change. And they've gotta realize that. Absolutely. But thank you so much, brother. You're welcome, It's been brother. great, it has been great. Great. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, your life will change. Now you can contact us via our confidential email so we can let you know what the next step is on this exciting new journey you've begun. I'm Bob Placey, thank you for joining us on Viewpoint. Now in our second season, Viewpoint is hitting more topics head on than ever this year. Every Viewpoint program is produced without any commercial advertising, but we couldn't do this show without the support of our financial partners, and it only takes a minute to give. Go to WTLW.com and click Get Involved, then Donate. Your gift of $20, $50, or even $100 will help continue the outreach of TV44's Viewpoint program to impact your hometown and the world. Remember, you can share all the Viewpoint interviews you've seen today online at YouTube. And you can listen to the Viewpoint podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere you can listen to a podcast. <laughs>